Will you pray with me, please? Lord, pour out your love upon us and refresh us with your Holy Spirit. Warm our hearts and put upon our breath words of peace and love and grace. And allow my words to become but a murmur as we listen for your voice clearly this day. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. amen. <clears throat> I have been watching a television show lately <clears throat> called I Survive. And I have to admit that watching it is a little like watching a car wreck. You don't want to look, but you find yourself doing it anyway, perhaps with a little morbid curiosity. Has anybody seen this show? Yeah. <laughs> That's what, exactly what it's like, and it's, it's very easy to get drawn into people's lives that are, that are being presented on this show. And, how they survived whatever it is their story is about. And they're all pretty gruesome. Some are attacked by wild animals and have to fight them off after suffering some horrible wounds and then have to try to find their way out of the mountains or the woods or wherever they've been left off. Some are trapped by fires or floods and some are left drowning out in the sea when their boats capsize and sink. Whatever the story is, the one thing they all have in common is that they survived and have lived to tell about it. The story that gets told the most, however, are, are stories about people who have been mistreated by others. Horribly mistreated. So much so that they end up on a show called I Survived. Lots of horrible things being retold about what some people have lived through when they probably should have died at the cruel hands of others. I don't know why I keep watching this show and I can't say that I recommend it. But if you should ever happen upon it, stick it out. Because the end of the show is worth it. When all the stories turn from stories of pain and hopelessness into stories of rescue and hope. And if you're like me, you'll end up finding that you can actually identify with a lot of these people. Not necessarily their specific experiences, I would hope, but the fear that permeated their lives at no fault of their own. And then, either summoning some sort of strength and determination to go on, or falling into the resignation that it's, it's too much and that their lives should simply come to an end. Have any of you ever felt things like that in your lives? Have you ever felt like a prisoner in your own life being held hostage by someone else? or other events? Have you ever been imprisoned? Have you ever been lost, not knowing which way to turn? Not knowing how you're ever going to get out, or even if there is a way out? Have you ever suffered at the hands of others without any visible means of escape? And have you ever been so beat up in life that the only thing you have left to do is pray? And not those everyday kind of prayers like, please, God, help me with this, or, you know, God, if you could assist me with that, that would be great. But God, 
please let me die. Well, if you have, then you are not only a little bit like me, you are also like the people whose lives are recorded in what we call our holy scriptures. And two of those stories we heard this morning. We heard about the life of the prophet Elijah. And then we heard about a man only referred to as a demoniac, someone possessed by demons and made to live away, live far away from other people. And while our stories are very different from their stories, just like each of their stories is different from the other, they are, in fact, all connected by a common thread. The prophet Elijah, certainly a life different from ours, at least mine anyway, he actually led a pretty normal life for himself as far as prophets go. His life consisted of listening to God and then doing what God told him to do. That's what prophets did. And so he did. Sometimes reluctantly, actually often reluctantly. Sometimes with lots of questions. Sometimes not believing that God would ever ask him to do some of the things that God was asking him to do but then going out and doing them anyway. Because, well, it was God asking him to do it. It is here that I think I can identify with Elijah's story. For while I am no prophet, I do wonder why God asks some of the things of me he asks. And like Elijah, I, I have grown so tired in my life at times that the only prayer I was left with was, you know, God, you know, time to go, let me die. I mean, I've had lots of good times in life, but also bad times, like all of us. I've had victories in life, but lots of defeats as well. I can look back on some good old days, but there's a lot of uncertain days in there as well. And like Elijah, I have felt that I've been running for a long time and simply can't run anymore to the point where I could understand Elijah's prayer when he said to God, enough, Lord, I cannot do this anymore. Take my life and let me sleep in peace. Can you understand how Elijah might pray something like that? I mean, has your life ever led you to that point or close to that point? Well, 2,000 years after Elijah lived, Jesus lived. And one day, Jesus met a man who had come to that point in his life. Someone who was living a life that didn't seem like life anymore. This poor man doesn't even get a name in his own story. He's just someone who people say is possessed by demons, not worthy of living among them, so sent away to live among the tombs of the dead. Chained to the tombs so that he can never return. For he was now dead to them. How about that one? Have any of us ever heard those words in our lives before? You can no longer live here with us. You're dead to me. 
two lives told in what we actually call Holy Scripture. But do they seem like holy lives at all? Two very different lives led by two very different people, separated by a large amount of time and distance, but with one thing in common. They didn't know where their help was going to come from next, or even if help could come this time. But this is where their stories diverge from one another. For Elijah, his exhaustion, exhaustion had left him with a prayer to die. You know, perhaps he had thought he had done enough for God. He's done a lot. You know, I've run my race well and that God would, you know, give him a quick and easy death. For how could God possibly ask any more of him? For the demoniac, the one possessed by demons, his exhaustion continues. And he no longer has anything close to what we would call rational thoughts. For he has now become convinced that he's exactly what people say he is. And in fact, it's no longer himself that speaks for himself but the demons who have now taken over him. Demons brought to life through the life he was living, not born into him, but thrust upon him. But then their stories come back together again to a point where our stories join with theirs too. Elijah is worn out, depressed, hungry, hurting, alone. But when he lays down to die, God appears, goes to Elijah, and nurses him back to life. Fed him with bread that became his bread of life. Quenched his thirst with water that would never run dry again. God cared for Elijah for 40 days and actually would have done it for 40 years if that's what it took to bring him back to life. The man chained outside the city suffering the torment of demons in his life, when he saw Jesus coming toward him, he knew that that was the power of God coming toward him. The demons... They knew this too. And they begged Jesus to let them flee and die, which Jesus did. And therefore, it wasn't this man's story that came to an end. It was his suffering and torment that was coming to an end. God cared for Elijah until he had the strength to go on. God cared for the man that had been chained to tombs by sending Jesus to set him free. God cared for both of them. God cares for all of us, no matter what's going on in life. Whatever our circumstances, whatever pain we are suffering, whatever torment we are enduring, we know that there is a Father in heaven who will stay with us and send others in his name to care for us. For this is the story of God. A story that has no ending. It's the story that is told in Holy Scripture through all these other stories, always coming back to this one point. It's a story that Jesus lived 
to show us that holy words can lead to holy lives and restore to all of us lives worth living. It's the story each one of us can live. Just as it did for Elijah and the man returned to wholeness, holiness, sitting with Jesus, returned into the world with dignity and worth. Two stories from long, long ago. Yet two stories that still capture our attention today because they are stories of survivors. And the one thing I know each of us has in common here today is that we are survivors too. Survivors of being called possessed by demons, not human, so deserving of cruelty, chained into submission, beaten when we try to raise ourselves up. We are survivors of being chased through life by those who would, would harm us, even kill us, making our lives living hells. We are survivors of exhaustion and hopelessness. We are survivors because we are simply not done with life yet. And God is not done with us. All of these stories, our stories, have meaning, no matter how different they are. So today, today we're trying to acknowledge a whole host of things, all these stories that are coming together today. Some of them we may have lived and some of them we may have not. told you we'd try to get this together. Today's Pride Sunday, a day we celebrate the liberation of sexual minorities that have been cast out and tormented by others for millennia. A day of freedom from being called possessed by demons, people not in our right minds, categorized that way, crazy needing either extreme treatments or even a humane death. And our deliverance from these things is, is not only deserving of a party, it's a day to give thanks for the freedom from fear and, the, and now the determination to live openly as, as God's beloved children, just as we are just as God created us to be. Today is Juneteenth, a day when African Americans and blacks celebrate the freedom from slavery that was withheld from those who simply weren't told that they were free, who continued to live in chains even when those chains had been broken elsewhere. For two years, they lived this way because no one let them know. And today is Father's Day, a day wrought with mixed emotions for many. For many did not have loving fathers protective fathers, compassionate fathers, or anyone that even came close to the ideal of a loving father. But there are loving fathers. There are compassionate fathers. There are fathers who listen for the voice of God in their lives and then protect the lives of their children. 
There are those who, who follow the example of Jesus and calling upon God to, you know, to help us recognize our own weakness and our need for a power greater than ourselves to restore life to those from whom it has been taken. And when we recognize the need for each of these things, we are giving them power to become new stories, to be included in new scripture and, and talk about new holiness. For the preservation of our lives and our stories, they're the ones that now become the inspiration for others, that others will read about for centuries to come. For if our, our lives do not speak of hope, how will others know that hope is possible for them too? If we are not told that we are born with dignity, created in the image of God, how will we ever know our true worth? If we're not told that we are free, how will we ever know what freedom is? Every story matters. And every day in the story of our lives matters. Because every life has meaning. Every life deserves joy. And God is not sparing on either one. Will you pray with me, please? <clears throat> Holy God, we thank you for the gift of life each of us has received again this day. We thank you for the promise to overcome our difficulties so that our lives may bear witness to your power, your will, and your way of life. And we pray for those who are not able to see life ahead of them, to feel that life is even worth living, to believe in the healing grace of your love. God, we ask that you take us in your arms, hold us and heal us until we are ready to be set free in your world as your children, as your image that we can reflect to those who still hurt. And it's in that holiest name of your Son that we can pray these things. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, let us take a moment of silence and allow the healing Spirit of God to come upon each of us. Amen.